Hi there, so I'm going to demonstrate a program that I just wrote. Um, well, it's kind of a two-part thing. Um, we'll first take a look just at what this code is going to do, um, and then I'll show you what it actually does inside of the game. Um, so this code is my translation system, basically to act as a MIDI controller for a pipe organ made in Minecraft. So I'll quick show you what that looks like. Um, so if you download the save off of GitHub, um, you should be able to come into this mining world if you're not already, um, and you'll pop up here um, at the organ. So this is the organ I design. Um, we've got three rows of pipes. We've got basically what's equivalent to the choir, the grate, and the swell. So what this does is basically replicate um, the three different manuals that an organ has. So you have our lowest one, our basically our bass, our mezzo, and our treble, um, based on the size of the pipe. And then all of these are going from lowest note to highest note. So obviously highest has the um, shortest pipe, so that's why it's at the end. You'll note that there's 13 pipes, even though there's 12 notes in an octave. So this note and this note are exactly the same. Um, in the readme on GitHub, I wrote about how I broke the ties Basically, if a note is approached from below, it breaks the tie with the lower um, octave set. So how this works is we have this main computer here, and all of these notes are tied to a specific channel. And you can see these are kind of um, my guidelines for this when I was doing the math by hand for it. Um, we have this first pipe on the left being 1 all the way up through 13. And then again, I did the same thing plus 20, just to make sure that it was going to be um, a feasible range to use. So this is 21 all the way to 33, and then 41 to 53, I think. So each pipe has their own computer behind them. Um, and of course, I've got a little thing of lava down here. And you can also see I've got these redstone links so they're all remotely controlled. I have a different set of items um, based on uh, what row they're in that controls who has access to what. Um, so I have wool for my markers here. I have concrete for these middle sets and concrete powder for the top row. Uh, these two sets of pipes are just purely decorative, mostly just to give some light and whatnot in case someone were to world edit this into um, you know, its own thing. Uh, this also fits within a 15 by 15 area exactly, uh, not including the signs, which were mostly just for myself for, uh, um, for guidelines. Um, but this fits perfectly within one chunk. Um, and it's all done using the create mod and the computer craft mod solely. So each of these computers is tied specifically to one of these pipes. Um, and you can see I left this row open just so you can really see how it works. Um, each value of 1 starts with white, all the way down to 13 being brown at the very end. So all of these computers are lined up exactly with what note in the octave they're supposed to control. Um, all of these computers have wireless transmitters on them. Um, so these guys all basically act as servers waiting to see. Um, they get a message from a controller computer that'll say, Okay, your job is to play this note, that's obvious, but you need to play this note for a certain duration. So they run a script that sits and waits for um, input from the controller computers, and then once it gets input, it'll actually run um, whatever note it's supposed to play for a specified duration. Um, and that's pretty much it for the mechanical side of things. It's basically just each of these computers um, puts off a redstone signal. These guys act as receivers, and that's about that. So what's happening when we actually run our, our program that I made, these three computers control each set of pipes. So this one controls the bottom set, this one controls the middle, this one controls the top. So if we go back into here, you'll see I have in my sheet music I've specified, okay, all of the bottom row gets channels 1 to 13, blah, blah, blah. That tells me the note range is from F sharp 3 to F sharp 4, and then so on and so forth. So we've got about a three octave range to play around with. Um, everything else is clamped within those octaves. 
Um, obviously 13 and 21 are the same note as well as 33 and 41. And then as for the controller channels, this computer in front is the master computer or master controller, so it gets channel zero. Um, bottom row controller gets 15, middle gets 35, top row gets 55. To actually run it, um, we have a uh, WLAN play command um, based on a certain channel that the computer is supposed to wait on. So this is what all of the servers are running. So it's basically just waiting for input from this computer at uh, whatever channel is specified. On those uh, subcontrollers, those guys are running this command right here, which sits and waits for um, the code that's generated by the C Sharp program. Um, and it, of course, waits on a spe specified channel as we talked about before. Um, and then, yeah, this is the same as stuff as before. So one thing I could do is say, let's do WLAN test. So this is just a chromatic scale that runs from all of the notes in um, ascending order. So it's worth noting, uh, part of the reason why I had to come up with a tie-breaking system is because even though this note and this note are the exact same, because the pipe sizes are different, they have a different timbre or a different color of their sound. I can also go in and go to Edit, and let's change this from a roll, which is our chromatic scale, to a chord, which I have fine-tuned to a D major scale, or a D major chord, I should say. From the bottom voice to the top. So that's working just fine. And then we can also have it randomly run something by setting random to true. Which is not a very pretty diminished chord. Um, so you can take a look at this and play around with that. So I, for our chord one, for example, I'm setting this bottom um, channel 9 is our lowest note D, um, channel 21 is our first row um, A, or no, F sharp, and then channel 44 is A. So D, F sharp, and A. Zero represents that if there's a message that needs to be sent back, it gets sent back to our controller, and then it's playing for five seconds. And this can be any um, real number as well. So now, what the C Sharp program does is, let's say I want to turn a mini program or turn a MIDI file into a playable program. So I have this program here, which um, when you first run it, it'll prompt you to enter the path for the MIDI file. If it's your very first time running the program, um, you'll have to enter in your paste bin um, API key, username, and password. So this is what the .n file looks like. You can either make it by hand or the program will do it for you. Um, either way is fine, as long as you name it um, the same parameters. So let's copy this path. Let's get rid of these. So it's gonna generate a paste bin key three different times, one for each of the subcontrollers. And then this last one is our actual um, master computers command. This will download um, all three of the um, controller computer files onto the other computers and run their programs concurrently, basically. Um, because Lua doesn't actually support multi-threading or concurrency, this is our closest option. So let's paste this in. Uh, this one already exists, so I've already got it, so I'll just run it. So let's run that. It'll count down. This is just in case the files need time to download. And of course, like I said, there will be some times where things sound a little bit off, and that's just because anytime a note goes below the playable range, I just clamp it up to the, uh, the closest octave that's actually within its range. So if there's, for example, a um, 
an F3. Well, there's no F3, unfortunately, so that F3 has to become an F4. So some of the octaves are a little bit out of place. And then if you want to stop it, we have to stop it on all three of these computers. Or if you want to mute a channel, for example. So that's it. So that's what the program does. You can do it with any MIDI file. Um, of course, if you look back at my um, master thesis paper on GitHub, I've got a whole data set full of them. Um, but it'll work with any MIDI file as well. So that's how that works. And just how the program is doing this, basically whenever I give it the actual MIDI file, all of the notes are getting broken down. They're getting mapped within this specific range. Um, this is our tie breaking system, or this is our clamping system to keep things within their um, correct octaves. Um, this is our actual clamping system right here for um, when it gets called. This is iterating through all of the different notes. We're getting the duration in seconds when the note is supposed to start in seconds as well, um, because each set of pipes will need to wait for that first note to appear so it doesn't play out of time with the rest of them. This is our tie breaking system. So again, um, if the note is approached from below, um, it'll get put with the lower octave. And then I have a dictionary that contains um, for each set of pipes, we have the start time as the key, um, and then an array of notes with the note name and duration. Um, the nice thing with that is we can figure out pretty easily what notes are supposed to appear at the same time. So they get ran sequentially, and then everything else just leaps from there. So generating the actual code by hand is pretty easy. Um, of course, the modem has to attach the, um, or the computer has to attach the modem at the top. Um, we keep a variable to keep track of how much time has passed. This will sleep until it's ready to play its next set of notes, and then we'll play what notes are supposed to appear at that time, and then that process repeats. It'll keep waiting until it's the right time to play a note, and then play it sort of like an orchestra. Um, and we do that for all three voices. And then our actual, our actual controller code, we have, of course, like I said, three different paste bin files that get created. Um, one for um, each set of pipes, and then this controller code gets to um, tell the subcontrollers that, hey, you need to get this paste bin file, um, name it whatever the MIDI name is, plus uh, whatever the row is. Um, we count down 10 seconds just to wait um, in case the files are still downloading, and then finally we tell it to run the code. So one of the things that may be an issue, um, and it's really hard to tell, is there may be a very, very slight offset based on if no, if multiple notes get ran, there's of course going to be like a nanosecond delay between them, but they will appear basically at about the same exact time. Um, just like these will get ran sequentially, so just a hair off of each other, but they're pretty much lined up correctly. So this was just a simple project I put together just for the fun of it, um, but it actually turned out to work pretty well. Um, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I think this world has a couple uh, built-in ones that I've already started. There should be this Bach one, uh, W2. Let's try this one out. Whoops. <laughs> This is a Bach fugue. And again, some of the durations sound just a hair off, um, mostly again because a lot of the notes are supposed to be leaps of an octave. Anytime that there's a leap of an octave and it comes from below, it's not going to sound quite right because it ends up just sustaining the um, original note longer. So again, if I want to stop it, I can stop each voice individually.
and that's the whole thing. So surprisingly simple, the code is very succinct. Um, again, it fits within 125 lines, even though I've done some some hackery. It's more close to, I would say, probably 160-ish, um, but still within 200 lines of code. It's it's very very clean, and you can look through the code yourself. Um, again, I'm not saving your um, API key in the actual program itself. It's just stored within the .n file because um, I didn't want to hard code in my own username and password or API key or anything like that. So it's very easy to use. Um, once it's done, you just hit enter to close out the program and start it over again. And that's that. Thanks for watching.